Hey everyone, it's Rebecca E. Parsons, and welcome in to Tag Team Friday. We're going to have a bunch of fun today. I'm going to walk you through some steps with some fun things with our wonderful watercolor teacups. I love these. I love tea. If you know me, you know I love tea. And I love these watercolor teacups that uh, bundle that's in there. And we're also going to use um, watercolor and glitter, this background, for one of the steps I'm going to show you. But we are going to have some fun today. So I'm going to teach you a few um, a few skill sets, I think, today is what I'm going to attempt to do. I'm going to teach you how to book match. Book match is what I call it. I'm not sure that's the technical term, but that's what I call when I want to take two images from the Graphics Fairy. One um, original, and I'm going to flip it or do a mirror image of it, and then I'm going to show you how to put those together a couple of ways. I'm also going to show you how to do an easy backing. That's where this watercolor and glitter comes in, so you don't have to actually match it. You could just do a nice back on it. Let me see if I can find one that already has that. I think that's here, where it's, it's not as hard as it is book matching. Okay, so then I'm gonna teach you a few of my favorite craft knife skills. I come from a graphic design background and we had to use a craft knife all the time when I started. <laughs> Not so much now that it's digital, but back when you had to do everything by hand, you had to learn really good knife skills. So I'm gonna teach you some of that. And if we have time, I'm going to teach you how to gild with paint. Um, this treasure gold and I'm going to teach you how to gild with foil if you haven't used that before So we've got a lot scheduled for this uh, Tutorial, so let's just dive right in and see what trouble we can get into Okay, let me move my stuff out of the way So we can actually get started Clear my table a little bit Okay, we're going to start with this image. I'm going to make sure I've got it in the center of the screen. I've got a new setup because I've got a new house. So I'm just learning everything about this. I hope the acoustics are good in this room. So we're just going to start out by my easy book matching technique without a um, light table. A lot of people don't have a light table or a light box, so I'm going to teach you a cool way that works for most things. It won't work for every single thing out there, but it should work for most of our graphics fairy images. So the first thing I'm going to show you is I just want you to have three points that you can match. So we're going to cut this like this as carefully as we can hard for me to cut on camera because I like to get my head right into things when I am uh, when I'm doing close-up work <laughs> so we're going to cut three points of comparison or three points to join we're going to cut this handle part right there we're going to cut this um, flat base and we are going to cut this rounded edge right there. And I'm not gonna give you fussy cutting instructions right now. Nope, not gonna do that. Most of you know how to fussy cut if you're here at the Graphics Fairy. So I'm just gonna take this and trim as closely as I can. I'm trying to leave that black outline or the dark outline. I'm not sure it's black, but anyway, I'm trying to leave that outline for us. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to trim this one quickly. Get that out of the way. And I'm going to come up and I've already trimmed the bottom. So let me try to get fairly close here. I'm also going to tell you 
a little bit later on how to clean up any edges that didn't get exactly the way you wanted. I'm going to come in here to that point. And I'm using these really big scissors because I have arthritis in my hands and using the little scissors anymore just doesn't work well for me. So I apologize for that, but I have found that I can do pretty much anything I want with these fairly big scissors as long as they're sharp and um, can get in here, can get into the points. So, okay, that took longer than I wanted to take, but anyway. <laughs> okay, so you have these two with your three points, the rounded edge, the flat edge, and the cup edge. So what I'm going to do is just the first thing I'm going to do is flip it, and I'm going to match those two. I'm going to come around and I'm gonna match right those edges right there. And you may have to fuss with it a couple of minutes to get it just right. You don't wanna see a whole bunch of white sticking out there, white background. And I wanted to tell you that I, um, I printed out these most of them are printed out on glossy cardstock uh, um, or photo photo paper. So they have that shine in there for us. And I'm just going to take some printers, um, I mean painters, blue tape, that I have pulled off my t-shirt. And I'm going to put it on here. I put it on my t-shirt. That's an old stenciling trick uh, so that it won't pull against the paper or pull, tear anything that you were working on. So I'm just going to come in here on three points. Let me see if I've got any on that side. And make sure that I, uh, I'm going to tear this one a little smaller here. And come in right in that area. I don't want to get over on the teacup itself, but I want to have three points um, of my paper. And I'll tell you why in a little later. I don't want it moving. So I think we're pretty good. Check both sides and make sure you don't see any vast differences. And I see a little bit there, but I will clean that up with my um, X-Acto knife a little bit later. Okay, so I am just going to go ahead and cut out the outline there, and I'm not going to bother you to watch me to cut. So I already have one of those trimmed for, for you. And I love this one because if you can see closely, let me hold it a little close for you, is that you can see those little undulations in the rim. I just love that. That is so very cool. So if there are any kind of little places where uh, you think you should have gotten a little bit closer, you can either go ahead and trim them with your scissors. There's one little spot that I'm just going to do with my scissors. But if you've got any little close spots that you think you need to clean up, you can do that with an X-Acto knife or a craft knife. So I am going to show you this craft knife that I love to use, and this is a stencil. It's the number four stencil knife from the X-Acto brand. And I like it because it's got a longer blade when I'm cutting things like this, because it's, it's a little tricky to get in those edges with that uh, very sharp tipped point. So let me show you what I want to show you about cutting. And there's two ways we can do this. We can actually um, cut with scissors. And to do that, you need to just open up a hole in the middle of this handle. Just do it with your X-Acto knife carefully. Okay. 
open up a little hole and put your scissors in and go ahead and cut. Of course, if you've got smaller scissors, you can cut a little bit better. So that's one way to do that. I'm gonna put that aside for now. And I'm gonna come in here and show you the other way, which is cutting precisely with an X-Acto knife. Now, I hope I can keep my head out of the way, but there's a couple of tips I wanna share with you on this, is you always want to pull the knife toward you. You don't ever want to be cutting away from you. That's one thing. You always want to pay attention to where your fingers are because trust me, uh, craft knife cut is razor sharp. It goes quick and it hurts and it can get deep. So just make sure you pay attention to where your fingers are at all times. And also don't press really hard. I think that's the biggest mistake that I see most crafters make is they think they just uh, 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 use a lot of energy, press really, really hard down to cut it the first time you pull the knife through. And that's not how it's made to work. Um, and I also want to tell you, put a new blade in, put a fresh blade in all the time. It's worth the expense. It's worth the time. It's worth the energy. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to get right into that little corner space and I am going to come down and I'm not, I'm letting the knife do the work. Remember I told you I have arthritis in my fingers, so I don't want to be pressing real hard and hurting myself. So I am just, it may take three or four passes for you to cut the whole way through. But go slowly. It's not something zip, zip, zip that you're supposed to do really fast either because that's, that's how you can cut yourself and get hurt. So I'm going to pull this through a couple more times. Check the back, and you can see that that's fully cut. Okay? So how to do a circular surface. That's that's wasn't totally circular. Straight lines are a lot easier to cut than the circle ones, but this is a pretty deep um, cut right here that we're a pretty big diameter circle that we're going to be cutting. So you want to do very similar to what you do with your scissors when you're fussy cutting, is you want to turn the paper. Just turn the paper. Keep your knife down and turn the paper. Aha! And I had done a couple of passes previously, so I've got most of them. Sometimes you can turn over to the back, and if it's made a mark, you can you can play with the back of it. But let's get in here and get these edges. You want to come in right to that point and make sure that you've got that very well cut. Just take your time with an X-Acto knife. Just take your time. And make sure that you are getting what you want. Okay, there's a little space right there that I need to work on. And I need to work on that corner. So I'm going to do that a couple more times. Get into the corner. I'm going to do this corner a couple of times, carefully and slowly. I don't think we're getting there. Turn over and do it from the back. Sometimes that works easier, and I think we've got it mastered. So I hope you learned something today about the X-Acto knife cutting. It is, there is an art and a craft to that as well as to what we're doing. Now, if you've got any places that you think need to be cleaned up, and there's a couple on this, as you can see, you can do it with your scissors or you can do it with a knife by just going over it carefully the same way, two or three times. 
and especially in these little inner corners there is a lot of times just a little piece and I just go in and kind of press and pull, press and pull, press and pull, press and pull. And then kind of just drag that out of the way. I hope that makes sense and I hope that helps you to learn about that. So that is the, the um, more difficult way of book matching. And, of course, you can cut these two pieces out first by themselves and then glue them together. I usually do this, this part, and I think I forgot to tell you, when we get to a certain point, when I've got all these edges cut out, I will go ahead and open this up and put some glue in there right now so that when I cut the final edge, it is stuck in place. Okay, does that make sense? Just um, when you get all of these edges cut off, before you cut the, the final edge, just put some glue in a few places to make sure that it's going to stay when you cut the tape off of it. Okay, so let's do book matching with just a plain background, not the same exact background. So I am just gonna fold this over and crease it and I am going to go ahead and just put a little bit of glue I'm using Mod Podge as my glue and put just a little bit of glue in here not a lot don't want a lot because that will can mess you up I definitely want to put some around the handle but not a lot. If you get too much on there, kind of wipe it back because that'll be harder to cut through or it will take you longer because you have to wait for it to dry a little bit. Let me get the glue off my fingers. All right, I think that's pretty good. So from here, the cutting rules seem to apply. But you don't have to worry about three points right now. You can just actually trim around the edge because there's no worry about what the backing's going to be exactly like this because we've made that solid background, that wonderful watercolor glitter paper that we have in the bundles. And we're kind of finished with that. See what a nice background that makes. I'm not gonna take the time to cut out the handle, but you know the ways to cut it out now, so you can do that. But that's, that's fun, and that's a little bit easier than trying to do the book matching type. Okay. So what else do I need to show you? I think we've got time to do some gilding, and this is one of my favorite products, Treasure Gold. Uh, it's by Folk Art. And let me get this puppy open. I think there's enough on that foil to use it. And of course, I've got myself all goofed up here. Always have my fingers in the wrong place. I'm just gonna take a very a um, small brush, very, very small pointed brush. And I'm going to come in here and I am just going to spread this on in a few places. I kind of don't want it to look like, you know me, I like rustic, so I kind of want it to just look like um, some of the edge of the gilding has come off of there, so I don't want it painted in fully, but I'm gonna come in and just dab a few areas on the interior of this to give it a little bit of shine. We always want a little bit of shine, right? This doesn't take very much paint, doesn't take very much time, and it's a whole lot of fun. 
Okay, I think you can see where I'm going with that. A little tricky painting on camera. I'm one of these people that really has to get my face up into something to paint or to cut or any of those things, but I think you can see, hopefully, that shine in there. Let me put it a few different ways so you can see that shine. So that's one way, and that's probably the easiest way to um, make something gild is with paint. Let me get my fingers cleaned off here. And the next way is to gild with foil. And here is, again, I want this to look like um, some of the some of the gold has peeled off the edges there. So we are going to do this with our Mod Podge. I bet you didn't know that you could actually gild with Mod Podge. And a little bit about the foil. You can buy this foil, please. The shiny side is the upside. That's the side that's gonna show on your work. You want to apply the duller side, the more dull side, down into your glue. Hope that makes sense. That's the easiest way I know to tell you to uh, how to do that is to the shiny side up with the foils out there today. And you can you can find lots of foils, but I've I've seen a whole lot of talk about foils lately and I've used them for years, so I thought I'd want to share that with you today. So, I'm just going to come in and put just a little bit I hope I didn't have my brush too wet. Let me dry that brush a hair. It was sitting in water. So you want this to be pretty pure uh, glue. And you want to brush it a few seconds because you want it to be um, sticky but not dry. It has to be has to be a little bit tacky, I guess would be the word for it to work. So that's a, still a little wet, but that's okay. I'm going to put the foil down in it, and I'm going to burnish it with just my finger here. And you can, of course, ha use your um, burnishing tool. That works as well. You can use, since I've got these sitting right here, you can use your scissors. Let me get this in there. You want to rub this fairly hard. I'm probably making the camera wiggle everywhere. Sorry about that. So I am pressing fairly firmly on here. Going ahead and rubbing it down with my hand. And see it's stuck to it. So it should, it should let the gilding come off. Ah. There we go. You can see. Whoops. It is peeling some of my image off. Mm. Not so fun. <laughs> So actually, that was probably from where it was wet. So anyway, you got to see an oops today from that. Let's try it one more time. That was probably, like I said, from when I put the, um, the I had water in my brush, too much water in my brush there. So let's try it one more time here with just the glue and no water, hopefully. Put it on. It's always good to see some oopses. I burnish it a little bit with my finger and burnish it with the scissors. Let me pick it up and peel this back. And we didn't get it stuck over there. So I can put it back down and hope it does it but if there's another thing to tell you if you don't get it on the first try you can come back and put some more Mod Podge on 
and lay your foil down again in certain areas in that area and burnish it down I think I got on there too quickly so you're seeing a whole bunch of ways not to do it today sorry <laughs> remember it has to be just a little tacky for it to work there we go so there you can see some of the gilding with foil and of course if you want it to be totally covered with foil not rustic like this you can certainly go for that look um, it might take you a little bit longer it might take you several tries to get all of the areas covered but it looks it looks beautiful I love 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 the look of that rim okay have us showed you everything I was going to show you of course you can embellish them with um, tags and, and I'm sorry we're making tags you can embellish them with beads and tassels and all kinds of things let me show you some of the things I do with them on these bigger ones I um, make them as gifts or cards cards with gifts I leave just this little pocket and I can put a little tea bag in it I embellished it with a handmade tassel just made out of embroidery floss so that's one of the ways I use it I use it as a name holder or a name tag or a place tag when I am having a tea I have lots of teas if you know me I will invite people to tea anytime so this is just how kind of I like to do it I will leave a tea bag in there and I usually gift people a cup uh, with it so that's another one this is just a tag on a tag and here's another one if I give a present it can be used as a gift tag and I just made sure that the handle was big enough to slip over the lid here so that's a really pretty um, teapot so that kind of works well doesn't it and for those of you who are into junk journaling or making your own journals you can use these as tags of course that's what we're doing just a little tag in your uh, junk journals that's another way I use them you can also make them as a journaling card or something to put in the pocket of your junk journals that's a really fun thing to do you can also use them for cards that's another thing I do is just put it on a card when an invitation maybe inviting somebody to come have tea with me and again like I said you can put all the bells and whistles on them that you want to I think I've covered it all today and I hope you will join me and print out some of these wonderful watercolor teacups from that beautiful bundle and uh, join me in making some tags so I'm having fun I hope you're having fun with Tag Team Friday this is Rebecca signing out have fun <laughs>